Tom, the AFC Women's Football Seminar, can you tell us a little bit about it? Uh, yeah, it was a three-day seminar up in uh, KL, and it was all the all the countries from Asia were invited to it to have a, you know on a few different issues. One was uh, looking back at the World Cup, and the technical group from the World Cup gave a presentation. Um, the technical director from Germany and the technical director from the US were there, and they gave a presentation about what they're doing in uh, their countries. I gave a presentation on what we're doing in Australia, and then there were several sort of working groups that, that looked at you know the various challenges and what we're all trying to achieve sort of within the AFC and in and um, in conjunction with FIFA. So you know FIFA actually ran the event, but uh, it was done for the countries of the AFC. Tell us, what were the, some of the challenges that were raised during the seminar? Well, it's it's one of those. You, you, it's a, there's a vast range because you know you've got the countries like Japan, the South Korea, the big country, and ourselves, and then you've got the West West Asian countries who, you know, it, where it's sometimes difficult to actually play football, and you've got the smaller federations. You know, I think some of the um, the major challenges with the, the bigger countries are making sure that we stay up with the Germanys and the USs of this world. The smaller countries, it, you know, it's just chipping away bit by bit to make sure that they get women's football on the agenda and make sure that they keep, you know, progressing the game, make sure that the country keeps supporting the game, make sure that FIFA keeps supporting the game. So there's a real wide range of, of, of issues and, and problems and challenges for every country. But the AFC is one of those confederations who have improved out of sight in this World Cup and also the Junior World Cups have displayed that in the past. Very much so. And, and you know, you get a real... There was a real great sense that the other countries, if you like, the second-tier countries, there's people there with great passion and, and commitment to actually making the women's game in their countries even bigger as well. So, you know, to be honest, when you look across Asia, you, you come away, you know, with a lot of confidence in, in what was happening and what countries are trying to do. Any warning signs from ourselves with lots of the Asian countries starting to take women's football seriously? Uh, there's always warning signs and you know it's very important that you keep pace with what's happening in the game and that's critical for us moving forward. You know, the biggest uh, sort of sleeper in a sense are countries like Iran who have got very good players and, and if they you know, get support from their country which can be culturally a little bit difficult you know those countries if India decide to get their act together um, then there's, there's some sleeping giants out there that could really bust onto the scene What would you say the three key things are that Australia need to do uh, to keep moving forward? Uh, well, firstly, it's like generally we need to keep the momentum that we've, we've built up, we can't afford to just say well we've got to this level, keep at this level we've got to look for more and that's a, there's, a, there's a range of things, the W League's critical we need to keep uh, progressing the W League 10 games isn't enough we need to start getting more games even if it's condensed into the same time period and um, we need to start continuing to prove the, the quality of that and the organisation of it etc so that that's one thing because that keeps our domestic, domestic profile high and gives opportunities to players we need to keep solid national team programmes for the senior team you know that's making sure that we play enough internationals every year to keep our players in the world game and playing at that level and the third thing that we really need to do and the most important thing probably is is putting more resources and emphasis on development uh, you, you lose track particularly in Asia very very quickly if we don't put resources into development and at the moment we're doing exceptionally well with not enough uh, time and resources get into that area. In terms of the W League, we're seeing an application come in from the Illawarra Stingrays to join the league. Do you think ex expansion is a good idea? Do you think this will improve the league? Or? Personal opinion, eight teams is, is ideal. Yep. And, and a personal opinion as a team like Wollongong would be a big asset to the league. Geographically, they're well placed. They've got a good organisation. They've got um, a similar kind of... Um, you, you can... Uh, look at the similarities between them and Canberra. You know, a, a regional area that would be that doesn't doesn't have a men's team in the, in the main league. That would be well supported. Would get media. Would get the the attention of the the people down there. And you've got people who are very very keen to to get Illawarra and Wollongong in the league. And I think it'd be a great move. And finally, what about junior development? We saw that our, our junior teams weren't able to make it through to the World Cup. Um, yeah. What's happening in Asia that we, we need to try and keep abreast of? I mean, to be honest, we, we can't actually compete with a lot of things that the Asian countries can do at that level. You know, that, um, the Chinese team for the under-17 qualifiers have been in camp full-time since November last year. 
the, the um, South Korean team had an agreement with the Federation this year that they get 60 contact days with a team. That's six 10-day camps and got together 25 days before the tournament. We can't do that. What, what we do need to do, though, is we need to uh, put more of our emphasis from our programmes into the development area. And we've got a meeting in a couple of days' time to try and formalise that. So our, our programmes, instead of looking after our senior team primarily, we've got to start looking at them, looking after our younger teams and trying to do the best we can from that regard. Thanks, Tom. Pleasure. Thank you.